Do you feel like your tennis racket keeps on twisting in your hand, maybe on service returns or anytime your opponent hits big shot? Or maybe you feel like you're losing a ton of power outside the string bed. Well, you may be suffering from a low twist weight. But what even is twist weight? Well, twist weight is a dynamic measurement that we can use as an indicator for torsional stability. As we increase the weight distributed towards three and nine o'clock positions on the racket, we are increasing the twist weight. The higher the twist weight, the greater the torsional stability. The greater the torsional stability, the less likely you're going to experience that twisting on impact and the more power you should feel towards those three and nine o'clock positions. So how does this help us on court? Well, it can be extremely helpful for shots that are more blocking in nature, like the service return or the volley. When you just don't have the space or time to accelerate the racket head, it becomes more and more important to center the ball on the string bed. But of course, we've all seen tons of pros shank the ball, mistime the ball, or completely whiff the ball. So it's no surprise that you and I may not be able to hit the perfect shot every time. This is where a high twist weight can really come in handy. Anytime the racket twists in your hand, you're not applying as much power, spin, control, or depth to the ball as you otherwise could be. So when that racket is resilient and resists twisting, you should end up with a cleaner shot that has more power, more spin, and feels more controlled. Now this all sounds great, so why don't we all just play with the highest twist weights possible. Well, it really depends on your game. There can be some downsides to a higher twist weight. The main one is going to be maneuverability. So anytime we add weight to a racket, we are decreasing the maneuverability because there is more weight on the frame and that is just gonna be more effort to swing. When you push that weight out towards the poles further away from your hand, that makes it even harder to swing. Let's quickly use swing weight as an example here as the calculation for swing weight is very similar to the calculation for twist weight. The further away from your hand that you place the weight for swing weight, the greater in effect that weight is going to have on the swing weight. That's why it's expressed as kilograms centimeter squared. The distance being the centimeters has an exponential effect on the swing weight. The same is true with twist weight. The further away from the center of the string bed that weight is placed towards those three and nine o'clock positions, the greater the twist weight is gonna be. So really wide racket, something like a Gravity Pro or an oversized Blade 104, putting two grams there at three and nine is gonna have a greater impact on the twist weight than adding weight to a smaller racket head, like a Pro Staff 90 or even a Pro Staff 85. So keeping that in mind, Adding weight towards the extremities of the frame makes it harder to maneuver. This can be especially tough for spin players who rely on high racket head speeds to control the ball. As spin players control the ball using their spin, so a decrease in racket head speed will lead to a decrease in spin, effectively leading to a decrease in control. For flatter hitters, this may not be as much of an issue as there's much less volatility in the swing where you're just striking straight through the ball. So what lessons can we take from the pro circuit to apply to our game? If you look at racket setups of flatter hitters, people like Novak Djokovic or Stanislas Wawrinka, those players are going to have much more weight at the three and nine o'clock positions. You can see this literally on their rack. They have huge strips of lead tape. Players who use spin to control the ball, players like Rafael Nadal or Roger Federer, famous for tons of top spin and strong slice backhands, they're gonna have much less weight towards that three and nine o'clock position as spin is huge for their game in terms of control and pulling their opponents off the court. That said, lately there has definitely been some controversy on the effects of twist weight and spin. Now, Racket Tech has part one 
of a video released. It's been years and he still hasn't produced a part two, but it explains the relationship between twist weight and spin. I recommend you check out that video. I put it in the description as it's just awesome and Racket Tech is definitely one of my heroes in terms of the tennis nerd space. One thing that this test does not account for is variability in the player's swing following an increase in twist weight. In my opinion, it's pretty hard to say because there are so many variables to control for. I was going to talk about it in this video, but I think it's just too long and beyond the scope. Wow, this is like 10,000 tangents. So if you're interested on my thoughts in the effects of twist weight and spin, please let me know, leave a comment. I'll do something. It'll probably end up being like a super long, nerdy, boring video, but I know some of you guys like to just hear me rant.